New hybrids today from Titleist, the TSR2 and TSR3, adding into that very successful TSR line. Got Taylor here to test some shots. TSR2 and TSR3 should be awesome. We'll have all the TrackMan data and we'll tell you everything you need to know. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahole of Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Taylor Ledwine, an online master club fitter here at Second Swing. And today, new hybrids from Titleist, mm -hmm. TSR2 in my hand, TSR3 in your hands. Um, I think we're really excited about it because the rest of the TSR2 and TSR3 stuff have been so great. Yep. And so to see them add on to it, honestly, looking at it, it totally looks like a TSR club. I mean, the, mm -hmm. they really cleaned up that sole with the other two, that the drivers and fairways. And it's, it's kind of the same story here just by looking at it, but uh, should be really good stuff. I know the TSI2 and TSI3 hybrids were really good performers in the fitting base here. So yeah. um, should be awesome today. I'm looking forward to the testing. Yeah, I am too. I mean, just looking, I mean, we don't really look at this part of the club that much, you yeah. know, but um, I just love how sleek they look. Mm -hmm. um, even, you know, in our other TSR testing, we've mentioned the, the kind of top here. Yep. It's very nice to look at. Um, so I'm excited to see the numbers they produce. Yeah, so the, the TSR2 is one I'm holding. It's it's kind of the higher MOI one mm -hmm. um, built for the widest range of players. Mm -hmm. um, now there is the TSR1 hybrid, which we actually did some testing on already. But yep. so this one kind of fits in between the one and the three. Uh, a little bit more of a kind of a traditional hybrid shape. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a little bit more kind of weight back, uh, a little bit lower center of gravity in here. And then the, the TSR three is a little bit more compact, almost iron-like. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you do have still that kind of weight track adjustability on the sole in addition to the hosel. Mm -hmm. So all kinds of adjustability. If you're the tinkerer, I think the TSR three hybrid is going to probably be the one that suits you as maybe potentially a better player as well. Yeah. So I think between the, obviously the TSR one with the TSR one products and then the mm -hmm. two and three, they really cover basically every golfer. Yeah, I, you know, I think so. I mean, and there's categories for each one of them, yeah. but I mean, anyone can play all three of them. So it's just a matter of finding the one that works best for your game and going with it. Right. But, um, you know, we've seen the numbers from the one, so I'm kind of excited to see the numbers that we get from the two right. and three as well. Right, yeah, this will be really, uh, really interesting. And so mm -hmm. we've got the four hybrid of the TSR2, we've got the three uh, for the TSR3. So mm -hmm. we'll see a little bit of difference there, but right. uh, ultimately we're kind of looking for initial testing numbers here. So yeah. um, with that said, Taylor, you ready to go? I'm ready. Oh, look, that looked pretty good. I'll yeah, left that. that open a little bit. Um, kind of hit it off the toe, I felt Did like. You? A, okay. But, you know, like when we were doing testing with the TSR1, Yeah. you can feel it, but it still feels like it's a good shot, you know? Yeah. It doesn't feel like with some clubs where you're like, well, that's not good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It <laughs> still it's, feels cause good. Because I think, I think there's, a, there's a happy medium to be reached, and maybe Titleist did it here, where mm -hmm. you want a good feeling golf club, but you also kind of want to know when you miss it. You kind of want to feel a little bit of that, yeah. Um, but you don't want it to be like, oh my gosh, this is terrible when you miss hit it because then it's your club twists all over the place mm -hmm. and it's all that. So that it looks like they've done a good job of finding that happy medium there. Yeah, I mean that one I could tell I hit it a little bit off the toe, yeah. but I mean if I'm say I'm laying up or I'm hitting into a green, I'm not that far off my target. Right. No, I mean you're so, not in jail with that shot at all. Exactly. So, so I like I like that kind of mm -hmm. happy medium. Yeah. Yeah, really good. Yeah. Credit to you, by the way, because we just tested TSR1, <laughs> which shaft is going to be a completely different profile mm -hmm. than the Project X, uh, what is this, the Hasbro's Black? Yep. Smoke. I think it's the 6.0, right? Yeah, the stiff. <laughs> so completely different shaft profile, but you're still hitting it really well. So. Yeah, and that first one, when I went to kind of take it back, I was like, I got to remember I'm <laughs> right. swinging a lot heavier club now. Yeah. There's another good one. Yeah, that one felt really good off the face. I always got to remind myself sometimes, you know, like with the other clubs we've been testing, I have to choke down because I'm so much shorter. Oh, yeah. Almost maybe a little low, yeah. but still pretty ideal. Yeah, I mean, you're seeing for the most part that spin is right around 4,000 RPM, which mm -hmm. I think is plenty for a four hybrid. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what you're looking for. And that was smoked. Yep. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, it feels really good. It's a little bit smaller than the TSI one. Um, right, which, yeah, that's kind of the, 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 
guess the trend they're trying to set there. Right. But it's not a, I don't want to say intimidating, but sometimes yeah. when you look down, you know, hybrids can be because some people just don't, aren't used to them. Yeah. But well, and that's why I think that's part of the reason why like seven woods are becoming more popular. Mm -hmm. um, and so they've, that's, you know, hybrids need to inspire confidence, especially right. when a lot of them are being used in different lies and mm -hmm. maybe from the rough, whatever it might be. So um, the fact that it appears to be inspiring confidence for you is probably, you know, a pretty good thing for the viewers to see. Right. And I just like looking down at it, like you talked about the sleekness, but also just the size, you know, yeah. not quite as big as a wood, but not an intimidating size, right. which I think is important. Mm -hmm. So after five shots, mm -hmm. um, 191 on the carry, roughly 211 total. Um, outside of really this one, mm -hmm. which was kind of a, almost a knuckleballish type of shot. Yep. The rest are spinning in that kind of high 3000s into the 4000s, which mm -hmm. I think is is a pretty good number to be at for this type of club. Yep. Um, and you have plenty of launch and plenty of height. You're, I mean, you're going to be able to stop this ball on the green. Yeah. And I think that's, I think, a, a, a concern for a lot of people getting into hybrids. If we do the dispersion, I mean, you're right. You're kind of splitting it down the middle there. It's, you, you kind of are. Yeah. Nuke to this last one, 226 yards. But if that's the one without any spin, if I take that out, uh, actually, you know what we should do is go to carry here. I'll go to carry. Okay. And it'll get a little bit tighter there. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think pretty good stuff here from the TSR2. Yeah, I mean, from the distance that I'm going to be hitting this in on the greens, yeah. um, that's, I will, I'll take this, you yeah. know. Um, so if I'm hitting it, let's, let's just say 200 into yeah. the green. Um, you know, if I'm dead in the center of the green twice and maybe chipping three times, yeah. I'd like to be the opposite, but I'm still not going to complain from 200 yards if I'm hitting it yeah, cause, this crisp. Right. I mean, a, a 200 yard shot into a green for any player still mm -hmm. requires a good swing. Right. And with, I mean, we're not at that point yet in golf club technology where it's like 200 yards away. That's just, I just hit this on the green. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's not exactly how it goes, but uh, still really good stuff, I think. And to see it, you know, consistent, see you hit the shot you need to, sh you need to hit, I mm -hmm. think is, is really good. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a great hybrid option. Um, like I said, the five results right there mm -hmm. are pretty much what I'd be looking for. Yeah. So as we go into the the um, so the TSR three, first of all, it's going to be a three hybrid at nineteen, so yep. it's going to be a little bit lower lofted already. Um, but then the other thing to watch for too, we're just going to maybe compare the the trajectory, the height, all mm -hmm. that good stuff, and we'll see if there's any big differences there. And the nice thing for me is I used to play a nineteen. Um, okay. So kind of seeing the difference in the 21 and 19 yeah. um, will be, you know, kind of interesting for me. Let's see it then, huh? Wow, that was, it sounded way different. I don't know if it you did. caught that. Yeah. I don't know if it's because of the little bit smaller head, it, but it definitely did. It sounded more, it's, it's almost a difference between like a, a hollow iron and a, and a forged iron. It was mm -hmm. just like, that was way softer and kind of just like a, a softer thud versus like a little bit of a ringing that you get with a metal wood usually. Yeah, the contact even felt a little bit softer. Yeah, I bet it, it's probably, I mean, with that smaller design, it generally does too. Yeah, and you know, we kind of said sometimes hybrids can look a little intimidating with the size. I mean, this is a little bit smaller, but yeah. still nothing that I feel like, oh, I couldn't hit this because yeah. it's small. It's got um, a nice look down to okay. it. I think when we look at that one, it's going to be a little bit more knuckleball than the first one. Um, yeah. Pretty, uh, be well, pretty it, it, happy with that. It more or less went the same distance. So, yeah. I mean, you got that uh, in total anyway. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think when, when, at this part too, you're hitting a three hybrid. This is, I don't know where you're at with your game. I know for me, when I get to the top of my bag, it's probably because I'm hitting off the tee most right. of the time. Uh, so I imagine a lot of times you're hitting a three hybrid or maybe it's a seven wood for you. Yep. It's a lot of times off the tee. Yeah. Most of the time, you know, hopefully on par fours, I'm not kind of hitting this in. So really the only time is yeah. if I'm maybe laying up on a par five or like you said, off the tee. So. Yeah. Oh yeah. That one was wrecked. Yeah, that one that. felt really good off the wow. face. Yep. Take that one. Yeah. Take that one and run. I definitely like the feel off the face of this one better. That nice, yeah. like little softer feel. I, so. I kind of thought you might just as I think that seems to be the trend is the better, you know, a better player like yourself seems to like a softer, mm -hmm. you know, more muted type of sound and feel. Yeah. 
Ooh, 130. Yep. See, and these shots are getting plenty of spin too. That's the that's the cool thing, I guess, on my mm -hmm. my angle. Like you, the three hybrid, you want at least three thousand spin, and that way it'll allow you, if you need to, to stop it. Um, it's not gonna, you know, land on the front of the green and then roll all the way off on the right. back. You know, and I think that's a concern if you hit uh, a hybrid and you get it drawing like that, that can be a problem. But and I think that's what kind of holds people back from playing hybrids rather than an iron. Yeah. Um, so if you can find a hybrid that works for your game, you're going to be able to stop it. It's yeah. just a matter of finding the right one for yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. just kind of left the face open on that one a little bit. Well, it's still, you still cooked it. <laughs> uh, let's see here. We've got mm -hmm. five golf shots up there. Yep. We look at the spin just under 3,000. Carry is over to, I mean, 204, total 228. Um, the landing angle is at 36, so pretty similar landing angle, actually. Mm -hmm. It's kind of stayed up there nicely. And your height is actually more height in the air than the TSR2, yeah. uh, which is interesting. But I think, you know, potentially could be part of the face open there. And I think yeah. we had one actually with the TSR2 I didn't take out. I still have that one checked in, so maybe that was a difference. But um, yeah, not really. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we're seeing some good launch out of the TSR3. It's not like this low, you know, flat trajectory club that I think, I think a lot of people might get that perception just because it is a, the three, you know, which right. is a, kind of the low spin uh, nomenclature for Titleist. Yeah. I think, you know, they label these kind of as low spin, whatever, and that's what we're going to see. But yeah. it all depends on your game, really, yeah. and finding. And that's why we talk about fitting is so important because we can label these different things, you know, maybe mm -hmm. a shaft is low spin, but you don't get low spin out of it. It's all player dependent. So, yeah. um, you know, testing out those differences and seeing which one really rounds out your bag mm -hmm. is really important. Yeah. Uh, didn't want to bring up dispersion here uh, because we got two of them that are right next to each other out yeah. there. <laughs> um, and I think there's also maybe something to, we've seen it before. I don't know if it's a, a fade bias is the right way to put it, but it seems like an industry thing that, players type clubs or maybe clubs built for faster swing speeds or lower spin tend to also kind of come with a slight fade bias. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I mean, we didn't do any adjustments with the weights or the hosel or anything. Mm -hmm. So um, we did just see all those shots with the TSR three were right of center. Um, and it was funny because with the TSR one stuff, you kind of had this thing left. So, yeah. there's, you know, there's sort of and it's it's funny to see that trend. If you go watch the TSR one video, you'll see that trend emerge as sort of going left to right based on how, I mean, the club head, but also the shaft too probably plays a big role in that as well. Yeah, the shaft will also play a role, but I think kind of when we look at categorizing them, yeah. even down to the TSIs, the one and two were more of your high MOI yeah. draw bias. So then leading into the TSR, um, you know, here we can see it's a little bit lower spinning club head, um, a little bit more fade bias. So um, just kind of what your miss is. So like if I miss, you know, to the left, yeah. then maybe this one's a little bit better for me. Yeah. Um, so just finding kind of that happy medium. So it's not extreme to extreme, you know, right. finding the one that's, like I said, the happy medium yeah. for and you. And then of course there is the Sherford hosel and yeah. there's, and with this club in particular, there's the weight mm -hmm. track on the bottom. So there's things you can do to correct things a little bit. But I think, I mean, we saw a lot of consistency with the TSR3, even with the, the shot or the strike locations, maybe not being perfect right uh, i know there was a, like one that was kind of a uh you know open face there mm -hmm. things like that but it seems like it's all going the same distance which is i think ultimately a really good thing so yeah um the sound for me is yeah. what was the biggest between the two um you know we talk about with a lot of, a lot of other manufacturers people don't like the loud pop or yeah. stuff like that um so i think titleist also did a great job here mm -hmm. with both the tsi2 or tsr2 sorry isn't loud by any means no yeah but the TSR three's just got that nice, quiet kind of pop yep. sound. So. Absolutely. All right, Taylor, testing complete. Mm -hmm. TSR two and TSR three hybrids here. Um, I think really good performance. Uh, we didn't expect anything else really. Um, really clean look. We also s did notice some differences in the two models. I think the first thing that jumped out of this was just the the feel and the sound mm -hmm. of the three being a little bit softer. Yeah, um, you know, besides the little bit smaller head on the three yeah. um, and kind of the weight on the bottom, but looking at it, they both look great. Both mm -hmm. look sleek. Um, 
you know, feeling comfortable looking down at that, especially for people who don't like anything going on on the club head. You know, maybe yeah. they get mm-hmm. distracted. They just don't like it. Um, very clean, right. not much to distract you. Right. So, um, but yeah, the sound on the three was just a lot. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say a lot quieter, but quieter um, and maybe a little bit nicer sound if you're someone yeah. who that sound is a big thing for you. Right. I think, and they don't even have a, like an alignment on there. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just totally clean. Yep. Uh, and, and I think people can, I think it's easy to line it up using the score lines you see on the face and stuff. So mm-hmm. that doesn't really cause any problems. If anything, it's it's just so clean. Um, so I've got the two. You know, I think we've kind of lightly categorized the players that this is for. Yep. But kind of maybe go over to just, I mean, again, it's, it's probably the widest range of players, but mm-hmm. it, I mean, ultimately it means you got to come in and get fit to really see which one's best for you. Right. But there's a general sense, I mean, most players that, you know, maybe the average weekend warrior out there, for example, probably yeah. fits into this one over the other ones. Yeah, I would say majority of people will fall into this category. Mm-hmm. Um, it's more forgiving. Yeah. It's, you know, considered a draw bias driver. Yeah or sorry, hybrid. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's going to fit the widest variety. Mm-hmm. Um, it's forgiving off the face. Yep. Uh, you know, maybe not as much workability as the three because right. it's supposed to be a little bit more forgiving. But like you yep. said, probably categorized and you can go outside your category, but <sighs> yeah. um, it's going to be for the most amount of Yeah, players. probably the, the mid handicapper yes. out there. Yes. Most mid handicappers. Because uh, then we got the three here, and we definitely noticed, well, A, there's extra adjustability on mm-hmm. the sole. So the Tinkerer will prefer this one. Yep. But just a little bit lower ball flight, barely. Yeah. Um, and then just probably demands a little bit of a better strike. Um, but then you'll, able, you'll, kind of, you'll be able to work it a little bit more. Yeah, it's definitely for the player who is looking to be able to work the ball more. Um, yeah. So with that being said, it is going to be – less forgiving than the, the two. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also could be considered more of a fade bias. And I think yeah. the testing definitely showed that. Sure. Um, all of the shots were on the right side. So maybe if you're someone who pulls it a little bit more, is looking to kind of bring it back towards the center, um, this one is also a great option. Right, right, exactly. So TSR2, TSR3, mm-hmm. I think uh, that wraps up the video today. Really good stuff. Uh, they're going to blend in with your, if you already have TSR Woods in the bag, they're going to blend in really well. Mm-hmm. But if you don't have TSR Woods in the bag, they can still blend together irons to fairy woods in your bag really well. So schedule that fitting today. Uh, make sure your long game is dialed in, right gapping, all those things. These hybrids will be a big win for your bag. So Taylor, thanks for joining and doing all the testing. Um, really good stuff today. Yeah, it was great. I um, love the results.